The Battle of Mortain, fought in Normandy in 1944 in early August, serves as an excellent example of how uh, supply lines and different logistical factors can influence both the lead up of uh, certain battles as well as how the they can affect the course of the battles themselves. To give some background to the Battle of Mortain, we have to go back to the landings in Normandy on June 6th of 1944. Uh, after the D-Day landings, there were certain uh, first day obje or first few day objectives that um, the uh, American planners wanted to uh, secure. One of them, the, one of the most important ones being the port city of Cherbourg. It was a deep water port, which would have allowed a, a large influx of supplies to be brought into the American troops. Uh, however, uh, the the invasion inward stalled rapidly, very quickly, due to the fierce German resistance in the French countryside. And as a result, uh, Cherbourg could not be taken until June 29th, uh, which really stalled the American advance uh, and put a damper on their logistical abilities. In addition to this, uh, Cherbourg was damaged terribly from uh, the fighting uh, that was uh, needed to take the city. Uh, one number I found was that in order to supply the American forces in Normandy, they needed an estimated 780,000 tons of supplies coming into Cherbourg. However, Cherbourg, uh, at its current rate in uh, June of 1944, could only bring in 266,000 tons until further repairs were uh, implemented. However, it was uh, realized that these repairs would take several months, and they, uh, with the invasion underway, that obviously this couldn't be uh, allowed. So, uh, new uh, new ports were needed to be looked at in order to uh, fix the supply situation for the American forces. Uh, this also is just about starting to coincide with the Normandy breakout campaign as uh, American forces are slowly pushing deeper and deeper into Normandy. Uh, the capture of San Lo, for example, uh, was uh, one of the major uh, points of the breakout campaign where uh, after that city was taken, American forces were taking more and more ground more rapidly than they had during uh, June, uh, this being during July. So uh, as this happens, as, as the Americans are slowly forcing their way in deeper into Normandy, uh, General George Patton is able to siege Avrange, which is the uh, a city on the sea on the German left flank, and it's their furthest position on their left flank. And by Patton taking this, not only does he cut off the Germans' access to the sea, but he also opens up um, uh, the Brittany Peninsula to the American forces. Uh, in the Brittany Peninsula, there are two major ports that it was decided would be very beneficial for uh, to be put under American control, Angers and Brest. Uh, and since Patton was able to t seize Avrange, uh, it looked like the door was pretty much open for him to just race down there and take the cities, relatively unopposed by the German forces. So as a result, Patton was ordered to go forward and seize these two cities. However, the Germans obviously realized this uh, this couldn't be allowed as it would be detrimental to them significantly. So um, they devised a counterattack in order to cut off Avrange and hopefully reseal their, their left flank and uh, hold off Patton from flooding into the Brittany Peninsula. Uh, the attack would get away on the early morning of August 7th and the focal point of it would be a small town called Mortain, which is a relatively insignificant town. It's not particularly big. However, the one important thing is there about the town is there's a, a large hill uh, near it, which can be used by forward artillery observers, and it guards both sides of uh, the highways, which can be used to flood into Avrange. So essentially, this uh, this hill has to be taken out uh, along with the town before the Germans can advance into Avrange to cut off Patton and thus uh, stop them from getting supplies. So the attack begins on the early morning of August the 7th and it is really confusing for the 30th Infantry Division who's uh, holding Avrange, or my bad, the, the 30th Division who's holding Mortain. Uh, it, it's a very confusing opening scene for the battle. It was They were told it was supposed to be a quiet sector However, uh, the attack began at night, and in the darkness, uh, many units got confused of where the German positions were and where they were advancing. 
Uh, several units of the 30th Division uh, were completely surrounded and overwhelmed. Uh, on the north part of the battlefield, in a town just north of Mortain called St. Bartholomew, uh, one, one company of uh, the 117th Infantry Regiment was completely surrounded, and uh, most of them were either killed or taken prisoner, uh, my great uncle being one of them. But uh, further in the center of the battle at uh, Hill 314, which would turn into the focal point of the battle, uh, the lines would kind of fold in and out. Eventually, uh, by mi the next day of August the 7th, uh, as the sun came up, the forces on Hill 314 were completely surrounded and were holding off against German attacks. However, the forward artillery observers were still manning the positions on the, uh, on the hill, watching the road to stop the German forces from moving down the road, uh, essentially still holding off the, the advance for the meantime. Uh, so as the battle continues, uh, the uh, units from the 30th Division holding the hill uh, slowly begin to run out of ammo air and ammunition and food. Uh, and on August the 10th, they begin to realize that things are getting pretty desperate if nothing else changes. Obviously, uh, they can't get supplies from the normal route of cars and, uh, or, or trains or anything of that nature that was being used in Normandy like the Red Ball Express. Um, being surrounded, they were completely cut off from any form of uh, standard uh, supply train. So as a result, they had to get a bit more creative. And uh, the the Seventh Corps G Four officer uh, requ uh, requested a, a supply airdrop from uh, C forty seven planes to uh, supply various units of the Thirtieth Division uh, during the battle. Uh, one uh, one sortie, uh, which flew on August the 10th, was relatively successful in uh, uh, resupplying one battalion of the 30th uh, Infantry Division. However, um, uh, two more sorties flown that day uh, were uh, kind of misjudged. Uh, the, the drop zones weren't completely uh, solidified, and they weren't exactly sure what was German and what was American. And two of these sorties failed and ended up just dropping ammunition and food on the German lines. Uh, however, one, one of these sorties was successful, and uh, it gave uh, the American forces there a, a little bit more ammunition and food. However, it wasn't much and wouldn't last them too long. Uh, that being said, though, it, it did end up helping them push off uh, the German attack and hold them until uh, more reinforcements could be brought in on the 13th of August, when the German forces would eventually be pushed back uh, out of Mortain and the counter the, the counterattack completely stalled. Uh, what I find interesting about this battle though is the, the lead up to the battle was all based on uh, an operational kind of a sense of uh, logistics being the, the uh, ammunition and the food for the divisional like uh, category of troops uh, being like uh, with uh, taking the cities like Brest and Avrange which were really important for that. However, not only did the battle lead up because of the logistics situation, it also, on the tactical side of the battle, it was also influenced very much by logistics uh, with the troops running out of ammunition and food after being surrounded by the Germans. Uh, overall, I think it's a, a really interesting uh, battle that really doesn't get much attention in the mainstream media or in, in any kind of circles that are interested in history really so I think it's a, a really great example for that and